Hi everyone, my name is Cyrus Sakrami. I am the head of EMEA Marketing for Workplace by Facebook. I'm joined here today with Pratik Agarwal, who's the group CEO of Sterlite Power. Pratik, thanks so much for being here today. My pleasure, thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, and, and what you're doing here today. Sure. So my name is Pratik Agarwal. I run a business, um, it's called Sterlite Power. We are in the power transmissions business, uh, and we currently operate power assets, transmission assets in India and Brazil. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we do and why we do it. So we believe at Starlight Power that uh, there's a billion people in the world who don't have electricity, and that's not acceptable to us. Uh, we think that a lot of people, very smart people, have done very innovative things in the last 15 years in how to make the generation of electricity cheaper, greener, more modular. But that hasn't solved the problem, and a billion people in the world still don't have electricity. And the reason for that is that it's now no longer a generation problem or a production problem. It's now a transportation problem. We believe that this problem will not get solved unless some of the smartest young people in the world use their capabilities in the transportation problem. And that's what we want to do. We want to make an impact uh, to these 1 billion people. And we believe in the next 10, 15 years, uh, the world can be in a place where not a single person on the whole planet has no access to power. That's amazing. And it's a very... Big plan, big, big goals. That's right. um, as the CEO, I imagine you have a long list of priorities to try to achieve those goals. Talk us through them. How did you prioritize them? How do you even start thinking about that? Sure. So I think any CEO would tell you, probably should tell you that the number one goal is talent, especially when you're growing. Uh, trying to get really smart, intelligent people from outside of our industry to come and solve problems uh, of our industry is one of my key goals. I think we've done really well there. Uh, but we have a long way to go. My, my second goal is technology. Uh, the utility industry globally uh, is not in a great place. It doesn't serve its clients very well and people have outages. And one reason why it's, it's the case is because it hasn't adopted technology like many other industries. And that's our uh, go-to-market strategy, is to use great tried and trusted technologies from various industries like aerospace, automotive, IT, digital, and bring it all to delivering power to those 1 billion people. Mm -hmm. So I would say talent and technology. The last one is growth markets. Uh, the world, various, there are many places in the world that need our services. We are today in two large markets, India and Brazil, but we think all of continental Africa, many parts of Southeast Asia would need our services. And I keep thinking about the right time to enter and how would we, if we had to enter, how would we manage a global workforce? Got it, understood. And so let's talk about Talent, the first one that you mentioned. Um, the big part of talent is culture. Uh, do you have, if you could describe your culture in three key terms or characteristics, how would you, how would you describe it? Sure. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start with our purpose because our culture and our company is really shaped by a purpose. You know, when people leave good jobs, high paying salaries to join us, it's usually because they resonate with our purpose. Our purpose, as I mentioned earlier, is to empower humanity by addressing the toughest challenges of energy delivery. The 1 billion people in the world, the reason they're not connected is because it's quite difficult to build grids in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, there are terrain challenges, population density, and all kinds of challenges. And that's what we do well, right? So it's this social impact and this you know, larger cause that really attracts people uh, to us. And we try really hard and do a pretty good job of ensuring that we remain true to that purpose, right? We take we, the kind of projects we choose, the kind of geographies we choose, it's all aligned to our core purpose of solving toughest challenges of energy delivery. Yeah, of so that's the first one. The second one is really our values. We have four core values, social impact, fun, respect, and innovation. And those four values, I think our culture is born from those values. Uh, I think I'll, I'll focus a lot on innovation and fun. Um, we're a utilities business effectively, and it's not normal to have fun as a core value. And I think that's what differentiates us. I think. Uh, we realize that ultimately it doesn't matter what kind of workplace you are, people have to enjoy coming to work on Monday morning. And when we think about fun, it's not about having a snooker table uh, in the workplace. Of course, that's fun. But it's about uh, what we call, thank God it's Monday. And every Saturday evening, do people sleep thinking that, my God, I can't wait to wake up and go to office? Or do they sleep thinking, shit, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be Monday tomorrow. Yeah. And I think that thank God is Monday comes from who you work with. It doesn't mm -hmm. come as much from, it comes from definitely the larger impact of what you do, but it also comes from who you work with, right? So that's a lot to do with culture. Right? How do you get people uh, to work who you enjoy working with? They believe in a common purpose. They have a common set of values. 
So that's that's how we think about making the workplace fun. So you spent a lot of time thinking about building a unique culture. Why do you think having such a unique culture is going to be such an asset for you going forward? Okay, so let's go back to our values, right? Let's take innovation. Now, innovation is a process in many companies, and it should be. But innovation is also a value. And for us, innovation as a value is basically asking yourself, for everything that you do, there must be a better way. That's it. It applies to how you serve coffee, and it applies to how you design complex power systems, right? Now, why is that important, right? So if you're going to try and take a 100-year-old industry, which is the power utilities industry, and try and completely disrupt it to suit the modern world of renewable energy, electric vehicles, and all of these things, you fundamentally need a culture which challenges everything. Mm -hmm. And if, if we do that, we will be miles ahead of our competitors. And if we don't, we just won't make a difference. So integrating the value and, and in, therefore the culture uh, in the business is absolutely imperative. And I think for me as a CEO, that's one of my top four or five uh, roles as a CEO. Yeah, of course. And, and we're seeing a big change in India's overall workforce demographic. There's right. a rise in female participation. There's a rise in millennials. Um, how does that change your strategy and your thought process around talent and retaining talent? So that has a, that has a big impact. I think uh, one is, of course, India and many other emerging, world, emerging markets are changing their demographic mix. But regardless of that, our business is based on disrupting a age-old sector. And it is a strong, it's a very important strategy for us to hire diversity, whether that means young people wearing degrees, uh, gender diversity uh, and all of those. Uh, so we do that. We do that a lot. We use, uh, of course, we use workplace to promote diversity and to encourage diversity. But it's a fundamental uh, ingredient to innovation, right? If you put uh, six people in a room who are all different, you will definitely get better ideas. And I, I would say we are just at the beginning of our journey. I, I think we have a long way to go. But but it excites me that there is so much opportunity left in my sector to bring in diversity. And if I am ahead then people will find it hard to compete with us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you made a great point about connecting your people to your company's mission right. earlier. And, and what we see often is that connected companies and companies where the employees are connected to the mission uh, outperform their peers. Do right. you see the same thing? Do you feel that? Do you see that in your day-to-day? -day? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I, uh, I think we, we, got, we, we founded our company. We got demerged from a larger organization about two and a half years ago. We had an existing set of teams and then we hired more teams. Uh, we got really good advice to build our company around the purpose. And, you know, it comes back to what you, you hear a lot about nowadays, which is the why. Uh, people don't come for the what, they come for the why. And here, when the why is powerful, powerful like I want to bring electricity to a billion people, powerful like I want to end, end poverty, I think it really attracts people. So. Uh, the biggest challenge, like I said, for any CEO is attracting great talent. And if I have such a strong magnet, like the purpose, then it's half my work is done. Absolutely. So let's let's dig into the why. So uh, how do you make sure that everyone knows what the why is? How do you make sure that they see the why? Sure. So this is where workplace comes in. So um, we, we embraced workplace pretty much when the company started, I think less than six to eight weeks post uh, the, the birth of the company, we embraced workplace. And we used it, I think of all the things we've used it for, including a lot of communication, collaboration, I think one of the things we've been most successful is in embedding the core purpose uh, down to every employee. And many of these employees are work in the middle of nowhere. They work in you know, the interiors of Indian forests. They work in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Many times they would not see a colleague physically for two weeks at end. They'd be the only person working at that site, right? Now, how do you... How do you then integrate these 1,100 people around a core purpose who may never come to office? And I think workplace for us has just been magical in that sense. I'll give you a quick example. We, we started something called a value stack challenge. Uh, people would, uh, no matter where in the world they were, they would uh, need to uh, take a photo which talks about how they lived the core purpose that day and put a small caption and then tag five other people in another part of the world. And... That thing just went viral and it's, it's still continuing. And people still, you know, every day somebody, you know, thinks of a new story and tags someone. And it's just, you know, I think gamifying something like that would simply not be possible without a platform like Workplace. That's amazing. What's your, what's your favorite values tag that you've seen? Oh, I've seen so many. It's, um, 
so so in, so when you think of innovation, you think of like you know, of cool gizmos, right? Uh, this one guy he posted he posted a, a a photo of a man on the street who would who would when there's on traffic lights he would go up to people who had torn motorcycle seats and he would really go up to them and he would say I can fix your motorcycle seat for you in 15 minutes and he would take them to the side and fix it and take it back right this is like uber for fixing motorcycle mm -hmm. seats right so this is innovation right it's real frugal innovation so we saw many such stories like this on right. social impact respect innovation so it sounds like the ultimate impact is creating community at work and that's one of workplace's core tenants turning companies into communities do you see a real business impact for creating community at work and and how do you measure it Sure. So listen, this is intangible. I mean, uh, if you ask me at a feelings level, me, my entire executive committee team uh, believes that workplace uh, has led to creating communities and that has led to many business uh, impacts. One of them definitely is engagement and uh, low attrition. Uh, the second one is, I think, attracting talent. So while external talent don't have access to workplace, of course, because that's internal, but the kind of word of mouth that goes around by the community we've created, especially around our purpose, I think really helped us uh, attract good talent. So I think it'll be I think it'll be hard to measure bottom line impact. But if you ask anybody in the company, they will tell you it makes a difference, that's and that's important. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very important. Uh, I imagine it's not easy to build community in in a diverse environment like India, where it's constantly changing and constantly evolving. Yeah. What were some of the key learnings as you were building communities along the way? One, so so yes, India is uh, very diverse, and you travel, you know, hundred miles, and the language changes, the food changes, uh, the religion changes, everything changes, and of course, we we are in every part of India, but we're also in Brazil, and we hope to be in Africa. Um, one of the things that has helped us, uh, one of the tools that we've used is storytelling. And again, you need a platform to tell stories and it comes back to having a platform like Workplace. So we use storytelling uh, very vibrantly. We encourage people to tell stories about how they think, did things differently, about how they manage HR differently, about how they manage supply chain differently. And other people learn from those stories. And you know, it would in the old times you would send an email, and it would be pretty, it would be non-interactive, uh, and it would just end over there. But now people hear the story, they comment back, they save it, they refer to somebody else, and I think this whole aspect of storytelling helps build communities quite a lot. And and talk me through the building a community across uh, Brazil and mm -hmm. India, two very different markets and and yeah. cultures, and what was that like? Well, it was one of the hardest things we've done. Um, we started in Brazil just two years ago. We have about 110 people there. And for us to succeed in Brazil is entirely dependent on collaborating with our Indian team today, tomorrow with Africa or wherever else we go. Um, I would say that um, I think successful collaboration, you need multiple tools. You definitely need uh, people to uh, you know travel, meet each other. I think... Uh, what really helps is if you're able to, of course, firstly, hire people of common values. So it doesn't matter where in the world you go or what language they speak. Values, there's a common currency of values, right? You can, it's a little bit like money. It's the same no matter where you go. And we can, uh, uh, we, we tend to screen for values. We have a pretty cool tools, uh, semi-scientific tools to screen people for values. And if you get 80% right, there's a strong chance that they will connect at an emotional level with everybody else. Uh, and then that, and then the next one is collaboration platforms like Workplace. Mm -hmm. We invest, we use this. We use a lot of um, uh, the chat function, the Workplace chat function, the live function, and of course we invest heavily in video conferencing. Uh, that's the other way. So this is a good lead-in. What ultimately caused you to consider Workplace in the first place, and how did you compare it to other collaboration tools out there? Okay, so Workplace, um, th there were a few options uh, in terms of collaborative tools. Um, when I used to read up about, um, about articles about IT software implementation, uh, it's very clear that anywhere from 50 to 80% of IT projects never meet their goals. Uh, this was one of my first projects implementing a, a global collaboration tool. And I, one of the easiest decisions I made was that you know, if I don't have to train anybody on using a tool, uh, it's got to be the best tool in the world. And the thing about workplaces is that is, is the UI UX is identical to, to Facebook. 
So that almost guaranteed that everybody knows how to use it uh, within five minutes of, of, of logging in. I think that's a huge, big plus. I think that's a massive plus. Uh, in, uh, on top of that, you, you do have great features. Um, you know, I was, I was sure that with, with Facebook behind this, uh, the investment you would make in the hardware, the software, the upgrades would always be great. And the whole thing was a cloud platform, obviously. So I think those were some sure short sellers for me. Absolutely. And what, so yeah. what were the key business drivers that led you uh, down the path of looking at Workplace? So I think the, 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 as far as business drivers go, um, you know, interdepartmental collaboration creates value. I think that's, that's number one. Uh, cross geographical collaboration creates value. And when these two, three things come together, you create more value, right? Now, I'm not telling you workplace is the only thing that got us there, but even if that adds 10% mm. to, to creating that value, then, then we're home. And uh, I, th I think even your business model was interesting. It's uh, very much pay-as-you-go business model. So I think that, that, that made the whole decision very easy as well. When you were deploying Workplace, how did you define success for you and your teams? How did you know that the deployment was going well? And how do you look at it now? At first, the success was uh, based uh, on a simple parameter of uh, how many people have, ac how many active users do we have in the company. Uh, that number is pretty high up front, maybe 80, 90%. Then it moved on to how many people are using it actively on their mobile devices. That was 50%. And I couldn't figure out why it was 50% for a long time. And I was amazed to find that we didn't think about the fact that data, what we think is really cheap, is actually not very cheap. And a lot of people in the junior levels of the company didn't have free data uh, from the company. So we immediately implemented free data. And then from then on, so the, the mobile um, app usage went up. I think it must be at 70, 80% today. And now we have like a weekly stat where I think Facebook gives us, uh, Workplace gives us analytics and we publish that. So every month there is the most active user of the month award and somebody, you know, gets that recognition. So it's just, it's become, it's become fun. Let's talk, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about recognition. Any good stories about finding top talent in the company and help, helping recognize their work through workplace? Oh, sure. So, so, so le let me give you an example. Like, um, we, um, we uh, own these power transmission systems in India. Uh, somebody had an idea that could you use the power lines to set up EV charging stations all over the country? And I, I thought that's a really cool idea, right? Now, how am I going to figure out the viability of this idea? So I put up a question on Workplace that can someone tell me in the next 24 hours, how many points in, the, in, the, in India, the all of India, does a transmission line cross a highway? And we had these GIS guys who I didn't even know existed sitting in one of our remote offices, and they gave me an answer in like eight hours, mm -hmm. down to the last 10, right? So this I could not have done in any other way. I could not have broadcasted on email or whatever, right? So now all of a sudden I know about this great GIS expertise that sits in my company and now I leverage this, these, these teams. So just the fact that the CEO connects with them is a huge motivation for, for some of these guys. And in any other firm, they would never meet the CEO in five or 10 years. So things like that, it's been, uh, it could not have been possible without a great tool. Yeah, that's a fantastic story. I love that story. Um, well, as a CEO, uh, have you noticed anything else about your day to day that's changed after workplace? Sure. So the the one thing that's changed for the negative is that now I check workplace every thirty minutes. Uh, the good thing is I don't check other social media every thirty minutes. So that's <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's worked well. Um, of course, I mean uh, internal emails have reduced. Uh, you know, big large spam mails internally have almost gone away. Um, but I think the uh, democracy of information, right? The fact that people can browse groups and ask to join a group uh, is great, right? Because in the in the in the old way, there were there were these email groups, and there was no way for a third party to seek to even know it existed, a or b to request to join it. So now, all of a sudden, people you know who want to do more can simply look at what all is happening in the company and and just join a group. And suddenly they're, uh, you know, I, for, in, in any company in the whole world, some of your key talent is underutilized, for sure. Now, because of this, if I can use all that key talent better, I'm already a better company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's talk about you and your use of workplace. So you wake up in the morning, you have your coffee, 
you open Workplace. How do you personally use it? I use Workplace in a few ways. I, 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 I definitely don't post every day. I, I definitely look at it every day. I have the groups that I'm following. I have um, a few people who give me, uh, who there are, there are a few. So for example, I stopped reading various newspapers now because I find there are too many and it's overcrowded. So now, now I have a few people in key functions who post regular news that is relevant to the company. And I'm able to now get most of my news there rather than having to read, you know, an hour of newspapers and then just have one relevant article for me, right? So now I have like great articles that are relevant for me. Um, if I meet somebody interesting, if I uh, really like an article that is not, that people would not have read, I would post it. I would definitely do all my town halls on, on Workplace. Um, those are the most common ways I use Workplace. And, and doing a town hall on Workplace, how hard is that? Oh, no, it's great. I mean, there's no other way now. So we the town hall on Workplace is really easy. We just open an iPad, go live, and that's it. I don't even need anybody else. Um, but I think we will uh, probably, uh, you know, I think you have some APIs. We can plug in cameras and things. So we're going to start using those. And um, what I like to do is that the, the downside of town hall on Workplace is that it's impersonal, obviously. I mean, I you know, it's not people seeing me physically. So we, we want to change that. We want to see how can we make it as personal as possible? How can people really ask deep questions and get answers to those questions publicly? So that's that's one area of improvement. What do you like most about Workplace? And if there was something that you wanted to change, what would it be? What do I like most? Definitely the user experience. I can't think of a single minute or a moment when uh, you know it's been slow or it, it's just not been intuitive enough. So you know that for me is great. For me, I, I, the, the problem now is that any other app that gets developed now has a really high standard, right? So you basically addicted people to super UX and now any in-house app is never going to compete with this. So it makes every other software deployment really hard because nobody loves that like they do this. And they don't know why they don't love it, but we know it's because <laughs> they're now using something that is obviously so much better. So, so the UX for sure. Um, what would I change? Oh, there's, I mean, I have a whole list because, you know, now that we are like, you know, now that we use it so much, you know, obviously every day we have ideas. For example, I think you have a great polling function, but I'd love to see uh, more features in polling, you know, similar to other polling software that's out there. So many things. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll work on those for you. Sure. We'll send them <laughs> over. Um, a couple final questions about culture. Uh, is there a company whose culture you really admire? Uh, whose pieces of culture that you're thinking about bringing to Sterlite and bring, making a part of your culture? Sure. I think um, I would not say a company, but definitely, you know, the whole um, Silicon Valley technology culture, uh, the whole agile, innovative culture, I think more than my company, my industry really needs it, right? I think my, you know, people who are in the infrastructure industry, they bring really basic services to humanity. And uh, for me, it's appalling that uh, some of these great cultures, technologies, mindsets are not sufficiently entering the most basic things, right? Uh, roads, water, sewage, uh, electricity. I mean, these are the basics of life. They're not going to go away. And uh, so, yes, I think I would love to see in five or 10 years if, uh, you know, when my company or my industry goes to an MIT, it gets more applicants than, than your company. <laughs> I think that would be my goal. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. Uh, so what's next for you on Workplace? Next for us on Workplace is probably to take uh, collaboration to the next level, um, take engagement to the next level, find those 15, 20% of the people who are not engaged, get them engaged. Uh, I don't have too many functional goals. I think you know it is serving its purpose. I would not load too many business apps on it yet. I'm happy to use it as a collaboration tool and do a few business apps on it. But perhaps, uh, now that I mentioned business apps, perhaps some of the administration apps, if people could do it simply because the UX is so good, if people could do it via workplace, then their current alternatives that they have for HR services, admin services, I think just the experience, right? Ultimately, an employee experience is shaped as much by some of these hygiene factors as, as much as who are their bosses and what company they work for. Yeah. So if we could make the hygiene a lot better through through workplace, that would be great. Yeah, and uh, we were we were discussing. Was workplace almost a signal? Have you noticed that it's become a signal for the company that that you're trying to build? I think so. 
I think we don't market it enough to potential employees. But but when an employee comes in and for their induction, the first thing they are asked to do is to log into workplace and look at my past town hall calls. I think we immediately get the message that this company must be different. I think it sends a great signal. Yeah, I like that. that's good. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is last question actually. So um, to wrap it all up, do you have any advice for your peers, uh, other CEOs, whether they're in India, Brazil, or anywhere in the world? Sure. Uh, see, uh, I think collaboration, um, the community piece that you mentioned, the why question, uh, sooner or later, every company in the world, especially companies that are born in the old world, would need to embrace. Um, my suggestion is that if you are a CEO looking to do this, definitely pick up a tool. Uh, Workplace is a great one. I recommend it. Uh, but I have a but but there's one caution. Don't do it unless you're personally committed. I think me as a CEO, I was I'm not a social media guy. I mean, my wife is she loves it. Uh, for me, this was for a great tool. Despite that, to really sort of go after collaboration and and take the bull by the horn, and I think it was a, one big reason why we have succeeded so far in implementing this is because I basically decided that uh, went cold turkey one morning and said I will not communicate any other way, at least internally. And I think if you're a CEO who's willing to do that, and it's very easy to do, I think you should then go for it. Perfect. Pratik, thank you so much for coming in today. It was fantastic to have you. We're lucky to serve you and your employees and call Sterling Power a partner. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.